DBAT stands for Developing Beliefs, Attitudes, and Traditions. When we're talking about developing beliefs, uh, for me, it's really about keeping the main thing the main thing. Um, obviously a priority when, when you send your daughter or you send your son to the coach or to the, to the instructor is to develop a skill set, a skill set that uh, will enable them to play at a very high level or at the highest level that they, they have the ability to play at. And, and although that, that's a priority, um, for me, the main thing is to be able to develop good character, um, to be able to develop more than just to develop that person. Not as necessarily as a ball player, but more importantly, do they got, are they going to be a better person at the end of that? Uh, the attitude is really, for me, the ability to test on how well we're able to develop character. And, and what I mean by developing character, in, in the game of baseball, we can measure how hard you throw a ball. We've got a radar gun for that. We've got, we've got a way to uh, measure your foot speed. We've got a stopwatch. We can measure your glove, right? As far as you know, what's your what's your fielding percentage? We can measure your bat, either average. Do you hit for power? We have these things that we can measure. Character. Um, it's a little bit tough to to measure character, but there's there's three three areas of character that we know if we're successful or if we're failing. Uh, and that first that first test, if you want to call it that, is how do you, what do you do when you don't think anybody's looking? Do you continue to work hard? Do you do all 10 reps? Do you, you know, is, when coach turns his back, I mean, are you, do you cut it short on the line or do you always go to the line, right? And so that's one of the ways that we can test to see if somebody's got a good attitude or if their character is, is what, we're, what we're wanting them to be. Another aspect or another area is how do you perform and what's your attitude like when you just don't feel like going to the ballpark that day? Maybe you got an argument with somebody, your mom, maybe you're sick. Um, do you go there and do you complain about your day to everybody else? Do you go there with a positive attitude, infectious attitude? Do you go there and give all your effort? That's another, um, you know, it's, it kind of goes back into the, do we make excuses or not? And probably the most, uh, for me, the most visible way that we can tell if somebody's got a good attitude or not a good attitude is how do they respond when things don't go the way they planned them to go? Pitcher throws a, a pitch. Pitcher thinks it should be a strike. Umpire calls it a ball. How does a pitcher respond to that? Show attitude, uh, you know, kind of up, hands up type of, what, what, um, how do they respond? How does, how does a shortstop respond when, when they muff a ball? How does a first baseman, how does, how does a, the hitter respond when they strike out? I mean, these are all things um, that, that we look at. One of the uh, attitudes that, we, that I really push hard is be a teammate. Right, and pitcher throws a ball, gets hit to the six hole, shortstop flubs it, overthrows, whatever, there's an error made. What are the teammates, how do the teammates respond to that person who just made the error? First off, how's the person respond who made the error? I mean, are they kicking the dirt and throwing their glove, right? And how do their teammates respond? Are they on his back or on her back and saying, what are you doing, man? You need to have that. You need to catch that fly ball, really? I thought I was out here to drop him. I mean, I mean, that's the obvious, right? Versus, hey, don't worry, pick yourself up, you got the next one, right? So that's, that's one of the, when we're talking about attitudes, those are the things as a coach and as our instructors here at DBAT, we're trying to make sure that that happens. We're trying to build that character, that young ball player. Traditions is, uh, is kind of a, a, a tricky one, right? It, it, I, I wouldn't say it's a tricky one, but if I don't think traditions can be built uh, or sustained if if they don't mean anything to you. So for, for me and my ball clubs that we have, um, 
the traditions, and it kind of goes with the mindset of don't ever take anything for granted, is we give thanks before the game, um, and we give thanks after the game. And we do call-outs to our teammates of, of how they inspired us to play better, right? So before the game, we sit and huddle up, and we just we thank each other for being there. And we make a commitment to each other that we're going we're gonna to play with uh, all of our heart today. We're going to leave it out on the field, and we make that commitment to each one of us, uh, the teammates, to, uh, to the to each other. After the game, uh, we shake our opponent's hand, and we, we, today you got our best. No matter what the scoreboard says, right? Today you got our best, and we also give thanks. We give thanks again to each other, and we call out hey, uh, the praises, and we give uh, thanks to our Maker for giving us that opportunity to be able to play that day. And especially now, um, with the uh, the COVID shutdown, and not uh, we're not able to get back out on the fields. I think it's just a good reminder just to be thankful for that. So those traditions, um, every chance I get, we, we just uh, ring that true, and we ring.